fathers and daughters share a special bond. One that can't be measured by someone who has not experienced it. And over the years they grow up, but that bond never changes. And they'll always be your little girl, always making you proud in everything they do. Success in the deer woods doesn't come easy. You can't buy it. You have to earn it. You can choose your own results through a year of work, adventure, preparation, and scouting, a lifetime of learning, and even a bit of luck. All of this gives us opportunity, the opportunity to dream that all of the work, practice, and dedication might pay off, and to share that dream with the next generation, and to head into a stand with that dream that at any given moment you may have earned the chance to spend just a moment in time with a legend. Stealth Cam presents Dean Partridge's Canadian Whitetail. Brought to you by Ozonix, undetectable, undeniable. Excalibur Crossbow, the most durable and accurate crossbows on earth. The heater bodysuit, the ultimate cold weather hunting garment. Nocturnal lighted knocks, switch on accuracy and let it glow. The Raculator, score your trophy fast, easy and accurate. Glendell, the biggest and toughest 3D targets in the universe. Muddy, serious gear for serious hunters. New archery products, hunt with confidence. Hoyman, your land, your legacy. Tacticam, share your hunt. Old timer knives, built for generations. And by Stealth Cam, proven reliability, proven quality, proven performance. It's amazing how such a little girl can melt one's heart and that's been the case at our home for the past 12 years now with our daughter Taylor. As long as she was loaded up with enough snacks to keep quiet in the stand, Taylor's been coming hunting with dad since she could walk and they've been many of my fondest memories. Always curious, amazed, and learning, it's been an honor to watch her grow, even when she doesn't want to get out of a tree stand worried about Bigfoot. When I was trending Bigfoot, I got scared that they're real. There's no Bigfoots. You know why? They said that they thought that they seen Bigfoot, and now she looks like they actually seen Bigfoot. If they seen Bigfoot, I'd hunt Bigfoot. With maybe the only thing as big as her imagination being her spirited attitude. Is Jason there? Uh, he's sleeping. Wake him up. Okay, I'll be right back. Hello? We got a bigger doe than you. Duh, it's bigger? Yeah. Alright, well, send me a picture when you have a picture, okay? Okay. Good job, sweetheart. Okay. Bye. Bye. Are we done? Yeah. Packed up, we can go? Yeah. Okay. And show me, mommy. What was that? Mommy. I thought you did a little dance here. <laughs> no. With mixed emotions watching her grow from a little girl to a young lady, now after years in the field it was her big moment. This year Taylor was old enough to hunt her first white tail. This segment brought to you by AAE. Innovation and integrity is in our blood. Quality and dependability is in our products.
This segment of Canadian Whitetail has been brought to you by Bog. More than just a shooting rest. Bog. Engineered for the unknown. Heading out scouting with the kids like so many times before, except this time I had a driver and we were looking for a deer for her to hunt. After getting a stealth cam set up and some big in jail, we were hoping to catch up with the deer that we knew well and had nicknamed the Tumor Buck. Long beams and great mass, the Tumor Buck had been around for several years, nicknamed for the growth that he had for many seasons on his neck. With the season fast approaching and the kids at hockey camp, Steve and I headed out to get a blind set up, hoping that the Tumor Buck was still there this year. Once the blind was up, we drove away and around the corner from the stand to collect some brush, only to find a big surprise. Well, Steve and I are sweating half to death because it's way too hot to be sitting up deer stands. But we're setting up a spot down in the slough bottom and we just came around the corner here to get some brush to brush the stand in. And we could see a deer feeding, so we stopped. Now, how far is he? 100 yards, maybe. 100 yards away is one of the bucks we wanted to have a look at. He kept his head down, you could see his tines bouncing out of the grass. He's a nice deer, right? Eh? Yeah, he is. I think that's the tumor buck. I think I can see the tumor from here. I see something. I yeah. think something. He's just a shadow of words. <clears throat> something brown on his neck. Yeah. With no doubt now that he was alive and that we were in the right spot, we carried on to finish setting the blind up. Steve and I have hunted together for years. We've got a great relationship. There's one point of tension, and that's the brush loops. Because Steve thinks they're the best thing ever, and I hate them. Because it snows and it catches snow here collapses the roof so if you ever go to one of our blinds and you want to know who set it up just check the brush loops if there's brush in there Steve set it up go to a different spot if there's no brush there that means I set it up you'll probably get to kill a big deer there <laughs> so it's just a little tech tip of the week this afternoon Steve and I came in we came in here to get this blind ready this blind's kind of set up in a low draw, so there's a big run of timber and an old dried up lake that used to have water in it years ago, and then there's an old slough bed to the south. And on both sides, there's two little fields and they're pea fields. So what those deer have been doing is the ones that have been staying in the bigger timber, they come down into that pea field, and this channel here is how they get back and forth. So we got set up so we can catch those bucks going back and forth. It's nice and close to home here, and the nice thing about that is it gives us time with all the kids hunting this year. When they get home from school, we can just get down here pretty quick. But we'll get our trail camera up, we'll get some more Big and J out, and we'll get out of here. After getting set up and checking the stealth cam, the tumor buck was right there, and looking better than ever. Everything was perfect, and one little girl was ready to hunt. This segment has been brought to you by the Heater Body Suit. The Heater Body Suit is the ultimate cold weather hunting garment that allows you to stay on stand longer and sit comfortably. The Heater Body Suit. You stay warm or your money back. Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by Central Boiler Outdoor Furnaces, the ultimate wood heat, Black Eagle Arrows, superior carbon technology, Thermoseed, stay outdoors, Tinks, Makers of the world's finest deer lures and scents. Elite Archery, the world's most shootable bow. Custom bow equipment and Scott Archery. With the spot set up, the buck regular, and after a summer of daily practice, it was time for one last check that she was ready. This time out of a blind, just like how she'd be hunting.
Everything was ready. It was finally the big day. Saskatchewan's Whitetail Opener. We're heading out. It's opening day. And it's a little bit rainy. Taylor and I are going down from the house to a spot we call the lake. See if the weather lets up and maybe some pink arrows flying. They might not. I don't know. They're pretty picky. They look pretty picky. They look pretty intense. With her friend Cassidy headed to another spot with her dad, Taylor and I were lake bound with a bit of rain setting in. They couldn't be more deceiving. It's supposed to be nice by now, but it's not very nice. It actually sounds like it's going to rain some more, but it seems like it's raining more and more every few minutes. But that's uh, that's fine. She's all settled. The fuel's on, except and running. The wind's not great in here today, but fresh battery in those onyx were good. Are you good? Yeah. I'm nervous. 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 Why are you nervous? It's your first hunt ever in Saskatchewan. You have to be 12 before you can hunt. And you got your hunter safety finished a couple weeks ago. Because you've been shooting all summer, so nothing to be nervous about. We're set. With the rain starting to subdue, we spotted this young buck. A fine deer for a youngin's first, but Taylor said she wanted to wait a bit yet. But that wait was going to be pretty short. Welcome to this week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment. Locate. Learn. Set up, hunt. Brought to you by Muddy Outdoors. Well, it's September and we're out scouting today, a brand new field for us. And a lot of times when we're looking at a new field, the biggest question is where do you start? And without even looking at the deer stand, I can give you a good hint on where we're gonna start anyway. And that's right there on that inside corner. And what we mean by an inside corner, it's usually the corner that's the furthest away or tucked away from the road or the access point to that field. And traditionally, that's where those bucks are gonna love to move. So we'll go over there and we'll take a look. I know there's gonna be a trail from wherever those deer are bedding out that inside corner. There's gonna be multiple other trails along the edge of the bush, but I'm gonna start on that inside corner because I feel more times than not, that's where that mature buck is gonna be hitting that field from. Here you can see the heavy trail from their bedding area leading to the inside corner of this pea field. There's no rules when it comes to hunting a mature deer, but there's some guidelines that'll help you fast track your scouting. And that's what we found historically, that you've got a lot of field edge here for those deer to utilize. But nine times out of 10, those older bucks are gonna be coming out of that inside corner. We don't have a problem with mature deer coming out into the field and feeding with the rest of the deer. They don't mind being visible, but they'll almost always approach that field out of that inside corner if it's available. Like I mentioned, it's September and we're pretty busy hunting, so we might not have time to sit and watch this field to physically see where the deer are coming out and how they're acting out here. So I know by putting a stealth cam in that inside corner, I'm gonna get pictures of most of those bucks as quickly as possible. So those little channels, those little bowls that the corners often have, those little open areas between the field edge and the bush. Those are the inside edges that those bucks love. But like I mentioned, there's no rules, and that big buck might come out of the middle of the flattest part of the field every time. But most often, it's gonna be that inside corner. And after all, we're just trying to reduce the amount of time that we have to spend scouting and increase the time that we're hunting that target buck. And that's your Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment for the week. This week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment has been brought to you by Muddy Outdoors. Share your own muddy moment. This segment of Canadian Whitetail is brought to you by Nocturnal Lighted Knox. Nocturnal Lighted Knox, string activated, simple, switch on accuracy and let it glow. Shortly into our first night, we had spotted the tumor buck and after years of waiting, Taylor was ready. You just killed the tumor buck. I did. 
trying to be quiet, but she hit the deer. And it looked to me, we'll look at it again, but it looked to me like it was perfect. I looked like you're, I went a long way too, hey? And we called that deer the tumor buck. And actually the day that Steve and I came out and set up the stand, we filmed them with the SLR camera out in that flat that we walk across. And she looked at him and she's like, I think I'm gonna shoot. I'm like, well, that's a bigger deer than a lot of people shoot in their life. So for your first deer, I think you probably should shoot too. <laughs> I just didn't want to say that because I wanted you to shoot whichever deer you wanted. So will he make it very far? I don't think so. Not if the shot is like it looked like it was to me. And he ran, he ran to the, into that opening there too. So I didn't hear him crashing or anything because there's no bush there. So it looked like everything was perfect to me. She just came to where the big and J was and where she saw the deer. She got really good penetration and the arrow stayed in him, but I see her knock blinking away there, maybe 10 yards away. So it either pulled through him or pushed out of them, one of the two. That's what it should look like. Look at it right here. Oh yeah. I think I can see blood up here. Hearing she'd shot the tumor box, Steve came to help load up and arrived just as things would begin to not make sense. I did it! Don't know where the deer is though. Don't what do you mean you don't know where it is? We see like blood over there, but like nothing else. Oh. See, look over Ooh, here. Lots of blood. Look right here. Lots of blood, Tate. Looks like you drilled them. See, look at that way. Oh my. It's funny he stopped there though, hey? And then we can't put anything else. It was odd he stopped and then nothing. He should have been down by now. And this was the beginning of a very long night. Well, we just got home and a lot of our excitement got pretty somber pretty quick because we got out of the blind, we had a look. There was blood all over the place. We looked for about 50 or 60 yards. We figured the deer would be laying right there. And he wasn't. Steve showed up and we tracked him for another 200 yards. And now it's two o'clock in the morning. We just got home. Taylor went in to have a bath and go to bed and uh, pretty hard day for her because she's been practicing and shooting all summer. She's been doing everything right. And she hit that deer exactly where I told her I'd hit a deer every time. And when we left that deer, we were at 740 yards. So we went through across that quarter into another quarter and across the road. So I don't know if we're pushing them. I don't know how the deer's not dead within 50 yards, but get a few hours of sleep. When it gets late, we'll have a look again because it's still, it's unbelievable. We deal with it all the time. We tell everybody, we tell the kids, we tell everybody we talk to that, I mean, it happens, it's part of life. But I've watched that shot probably a thousand times and I don't understand what happened, so. Hopefully, we get a little more luck in the morning. A very sleepless night for both Taylor and I. I couldn't help but feel bad for her. She'd done everything I'd told her to, exactly. But morning would come, and we had a group of friends ready to come help look. We came out the next morning, and we're almost a mile to the marker. And Jason's brother Jeff said she better come have a look over on the edge here, so. Oh, there it is. Look at your shot. Yes. What about it? It's right where you. It's right where you want to put them. It's a little bit bigger than my first deer, Taylor. There was a forkhorn there. She said he came in, and the forkhorn came in. And she said, "Oh, the forkhorn comes back. I might shoot it." And then she changed her mind about this buck. Hey. Eh? Mhm. Mm He's been around for a few years. He's had a growth on the side of his neck. It's never affected him. He gets bigger every year. We had his sheds from last year at the house. Hey. Eh? It's a pretty cool deer and a pretty good shot. He sure traveled. I mean, it's a mile from the stand to this clearing, and uh, a lot of people came out to help look for him today. So you got some thank yous, eh? Luckily enough, it was cool. We can get him skinned out, we can get him home. Congratulations, that's a good shot. That's a heck of a first deer. What an impact hunting with my daughters had on my own hunting, and all for the positive. It's really changed the perspective that I have on why we're in the field. It really shifts what the goal is. It shifts what the priorities are. And it even shifts the reason that we're there in the first place. And congratulations, Taylor. You put the time and the practice in to get to your goal. And what an incredible first buck he is. It might take you a few years to beat him, but I know one thing's for sure. We're sure going to have fun trying. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Canadian Whitetail. This segment has been brought to you by Wild Edge and the ultimate climbing system, the stepladder. Safely design your climb in any tree, anywhere, with the most versatile, lightweight, and compact climbing system, the Step Ladder.
Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by these fine sponsors. For exclusive content, follow Dean and the team on Facebook, as well as on Instagram and Twitter, at Whitetail Dean. To view all past and present episodes of Canadian Whitetail, as well as new original content, visit us on our YouTube and Carbon TV channel.